Hello. The brother said he can't go with the justification because when you acknowledge why we go through what we go through, that's the first step of repentance. Right. Well, let's get that. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So hearken means listen. God says, if you will not listen. I want you to understand this. This is not we did something and God just dropped a heavy hammer on us. This is us in the wilderness with Moses. And Moses is giving us the stipulations if we break God's commandments. This is our forefathers sitting there hearing God's laws. So that's like you tell your child right now. You can go outside, but be home before the streetlight comes on. If you come home after the streetlight, I'm going to tear your behind up. Bring it out, Cal. That's the conversation going on right here. Bring it up. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments uh -huh. and his statutes, uh -huh. which I command thee this day. So Moses said, all these commandments I'm giving you, if you fail to keep those commandments I'm teaching you this day, what's going to happen? That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So here, it's not just bad things. Here's the flip side. Read verse 1. So Moses having a conversation with your great, 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 grandparents. Your great, 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 great grandparents in the wilderness. They're having a discussion with the whole multitude of children of Israel. Here's the flip side to that coin. Remember, if you don't do what God says, curses are going to come upon you and overtake you. That's the part we always miss. The curses is one thing. The overtaking meaning, you know, like when water overtakes you, what do you, what happens? You drown. When the curses overtake, you're going to drown in what? Punishments from God. That's right. Right. So read verse 1. Read the flip side. If we listen. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently. Now, if you will listen diligently, and what? Unto the voice of, of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments. Uh, what's going to happen if we actually do everything God said? Which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Wait a minute. Give me Deuteronomy 30, where Moses told us to choose life. So here, let's, like, let's say we're all here now having a conversation. And I say to you, listen, brother, if you listen to what I'm saying and make this right turn, you're going to gain everything above all the nations. Bring it out, Cap. Right? But if you make the left turn, you're going to be set in destruction, peril, AIDS, uh, 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 uh on the bottom, whatever you can think of to be the worst. Right. I'm giving you a choice, either right or left, right? Which way did we take? Because you said the punishments that we got, right? Did we listen to God that we were put above all people? Or did we get the curses of God? Curse. We got the curse, meaning we, what? we disobeyed. Okay. So, it's, so what I'm saying is, we look at it as we're just getting punished by God. But what we don't know is we were given the option we were given an option. Do the right thing and you'll get the blessings. You disobey God, you're going to get the curses. Right. Now we're mad because we got the curses. Go ahead. If, if we're doing the wrong thing, uh -huh. in eyes of God, where does the punishment, there's a such thing as a punishment fit with crime? Yes. All right, so if you have, who's the originator of, who created all the man? Where did all the man come from? Okay. He created all things. Right. So, so where did the man originally come from? So yeah. So you're asking where did the bad come so from? Where okay. did all the bad come Let's from? Let's get it. Isaiah 40 and 7. Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 7. Yep. I form the light and create darkness. So God formed the light and created darkness, right? Go ahead. I make peace and create evil. He does what? And create evil. So does that answer your question? That's the problem. What's the problem? You got kids, right? Yes. All right, so when you line up your kids, do you not line up the best for them in front of you? 
Hey. You, wouldn't, you wouldn't line up the bad for those two, right? Okay, here's, here's, here's what, here's what... It's all created by one creator. Right. So, what would we give the bad? Okay, very good. So here's what the brother, he said, when you line up your children, don't you line up the best for them? Didn't God, we just read that God lined up the best for us? That's right. right, right. And we chose the evil? Did we not just read that? The, the, it was lined up. Moses said, listen, here's the blessings if you do all of God's commandments. It right. was lined up for us. We said, what's on that other side over there? He said, listen, if you don't do God's commandments, all the curses were going to come upon you. So which one did we choose? Let, let's go even further. Let's go further. Go back to 23. Verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. Now listen close, brother. Don't leave yet. Don't leave. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. Wait a minute. He said, don't you line up the good before your children? Guess what? Your children. Your children also have the same choice that you got, that you have. Right. Your children have the opportunity to do the right thing that you teach them, or we try to keep them from the mistakes we've made, right? But what if they make the same mistakes you've made? Because what, which way did they choose? They didn't choose what you told them. They chose what the mistakes and the evils of the world. It's the same exact thing. So we only want to show our kids good, but there's a lot of times our children take that good and do evil with it. Right. We don't want to hear about the punishment. So when your child gets that straight bullet, oh my baby, no, your baby was a wicked demon. Bring it out, yo. Oh, they locked up my baby unjustly. No, your baby was robbing old women around the corner. Bring it out. He's a damn devil. Bring it out. He needs to be locked up. Right. So we don't want to see that side of our children. That's because we don't want to acknowledge their sins. Our children are just as sinful as we're sinful. And they got to get right just like we got to get right. But it starts with y'all that's listening right here. You're getting the word. You're getting the understanding to go back and teach your children. Read that from the top. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Moses said, I'm setting before you life and death. Blessing and cursing, the good and the bad. Good. But listen to what Moses now stresses. Here's the point. Therefore, choose life. Wait a minute. Isn't that what the brother just said? You're supposed to lay out the good in front of your children. Lay out the good. Moses is stressing to us. Moses saw what was going to come if we don't listen to God's commandments. You understand that? God showed Moses. Moses is telling us this is the blessings. This is the curses. Moses said, therefore, choose life. Choose the way of the blessings. Because he knew what was going to come if we chose the curses. Right. So he stressed the fact, do what I'm telling you to do. Don't break God's commandments. Yes. Let's read that part again. I want that to stick with you, brother. Therefore, choose life. You hear what Moses is stressing? Why didn't he, he said, I set before you life and death blessings and curses therefore if you know what i know if you saw what god showed me you would choose life because now today we're complaining he said we're gay to bait all things happen to us in slavery if you knew what we know you all would not be in the streets doing what you're doing that's right if you all knew what we know you would repent and keep god's commandments that's right. because ain't nothing in these streets man Give me that in Psalms, what's 55? Guile in the streets? Find that for me. Psalms 55. Ain't nothing in these streets, man. I think it's Psalms 55. Look at verse 14. That's it? Guile, guile in the street. Psalms 55. Yeah, 55, 11. Psalms chapter 55, verse 11. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. So there's wickedness in the midst, right? Read. Therefore, thereof, deceit and guile. What? Deceit and guile. Out here, they're trying to get over on you, trying to sell you things that they know don't cost this and cost that, trying to get you out of your pockets. Read. Deceit and guile depart not from her streets. So the streets is filled with wickedness. The streets is filled with deceit. The streets is filled with guile. 
If you knew what we knew, you would leave these damn streets, man. Right. If you knew what we knew. So just like Moses is teaching our people, choose life. We teaching that today. Choose life. That's right, man. You ain't tired of suffering in these streets? You ain't tired of going through what we going through as a people getting shot down? Just now, three police cars rolled up. You saw these brothers scatter like roaches. Why? Because something is going on. They knew what we knew. They would stop selling what they selling out here, killing their own people. Right. But they don't understand that. That's why we're out in these streets every day. That's right. right. Read that again. Psalms chapter 55 verse 11. Yeah. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceit and guile depart not from her streets. Isaiah 30 verse 20. Isaiah 30. Go. Read. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity. So though you're going through adverse situations, meaning you're on the bottom. We as a people, we're on the bottom. Why? Because we got the curses instead of the blessings, right? right. So we're on the bottom. Though we're on the bottom, read. And the water of affliction. We're being afflicted. Police rolling up. We ain't got no say. We get gunned down in the streets. We're being afflicted. Even though that's happening, right? Read. Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. The only thing good out in these streets is the teachers that's out here teaching you in these streets. That's the only thing good out here. The prophets are in these streets teaching you. That's the only good thing out here. Everything else is wickedness. Sisters dressing out of order. Brothers selling drugs to each other. Smoking. Killing each other. Ain't nothing but wickedness out here. If you knew what we knew, you would repent and not even be in these streets. Y'all understand that, brothers? Don't you know you got y'all? we got a target on our back? Both from our own people and the people of the other nations? Do y'all realize that? Do y'all see the importance of keeping God's laws? That's the only protection we have. We vote and we march for protection. White man ain't protecting you. The only protection you have is from God. That's what y'all gotta understand. Read that again. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. Come on. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. So we're not going to hide in no church and wait for you to come to us. No, we're going to go to our people. In the hoods, in the ghettos. The same, we risk our lives for our people who we don't even know. You understand that? That's what God told us to do. Go out and teach, give me that in Ezekiel too. Go out and teach his people. We ain't here to teach all nations because only our people are being afflicted. Our people are on the bottom. Our people are suffering. That's why we're out here. Read. 2 and, two and 7. Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse... 2 and 6. 3 and 7. Three, Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 7. Verse 4. Verse 4. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel. So who did the Lord send Ezekiel to? Go. Get thee unto the house of Israel. Since you've been out here, you've been hearing Israel, Israel, Israel over and over again, have you not? Right. When you read the Bible knowing who it's talking to, it changes your whole perspective on the Bible. That's right. When you're thinking it's talking to everybody, you view it as it's a book for everybody. This book is to the children of Israel. That's right. You are the children of Israel. That's right. Read. Go, get thee unto the house of Israel. And speak with my words unto Wait, wait, wait. Speak what? And speak with my words unto them. If you notice, everything that comes out is coming out of where? The Bible. Out of God's words. We're not out here reading our personal book. Right. Our memoirs. Telling you how we feel. It's all about what God says. Right. We don't even care how one another feels if it goes against what God says. Right. Y'all understand that? That's the spirit we have to roll in as men. As women of God. You understand? Read. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech. So we're not sent to the other nations. We're not sent to the Russians and all these other nations. We're sent to the children of Israel. Right? Read. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of an hard language, but to the house of Israel. Go ahead. 
not to. Do you know you're the house of Israel? You're the children of Israel? I guess so. You guess so? Where are you, where are you from? Mexico. You're from Mexico. Yes, bro. But guess what? You're not Mexican. I know they told you that your whole life, right? Just like I just told these brothers a second ago, you're not African American. You're not Jamaican, Haitian. That's not your nationality. That name was given to you by conquistadors. That came and slaughtered your forefathers. The natives. Am I correct? They did. That's where you got the language Spanish from. From the conquistadors. The same way, the same way Europeans came and slaughtered our foreparents, correct? And gave us their language. To prove it, you can look it up. Right there in your phone. There's a there's a there's a document called the Requiemento. The Requiemento was what Christopher Columbus and the Conquistadors brought over to the yeah. Western world. Right. The yeah. Requiemento was a document that they said they knew the natives did not understand because yeah. they spoke a different language. Their language was Hebrew. Right. In the Requiemento, it says that they knew the natives did not understand this language, but it gave them justification to slaughter them. You know. So as they read it, that's like, let's say you only spoke Spanish. Hypothetically, I'm speaking English. You understand what I'm saying, right? But I'm reading why I'm going to conquer you in my language, and you don't even understand it. So it made them consciously feel better to slaughter you because they're going to say, we gave you while we're killing you. It's called the Requiemento. You can look it up. This is what they did. They wanted to justify taking everything from your forefathers and gave you nothing. Right. And they thank God because they felt it was manifest destiny. Y'all understand that? This is who we're dealing with. This is who you're up against. The thing that you don't know is you must come back to your true nationality. That is your only fighting power. You got, I saw you looking up, Rizzo. You found it? The Requimento? Come on, man. You brothers over here. I ain't looking it up. We got to look these things up. Read. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 6. It's, it's, which means the requirement. Requimento means requirement. So these are the requirements. They told you you had to get this amount of gold, this amount of silver from the mines. If you didn't bring that back, we're going to kill you. So you don't know what your standard at work is, right? So any job we start, they tell you, you got to do this, this, that, and the third. This is your lunch break. This is where you go here. This is your bathroom breaks, right? At any job. But what if you don't understand what they're saying? And they fire you. You're like, why did I get fired? You don't know, you don't know why they're cutting your hands off. Hey, pull up the pictures of Bartholomew de la Casa and show it to that brother too, man. Bring it up. Read that again. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 5. All right, bring it up here. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of hard, an unhard language, but to the house of Israel, not to many people. All right, let's read this real quick. Come on. The Spanish requirement of 1513, Requimento, was a declaration by the Spanish monarchy, written by the Council of Castile, Juris Juan Lopez, the Paleosis Rubios of Castile's divinely ordained right. You gotta, you gotta read that slow. This is a requirement or a document talking about their divinely ordained right. Meaning, they know they came to Mexico, Santo Domingo, Puerto Rico, all these different places by a divine right. God gave them the right to come and do something. Read. Read divinely ordained right to take possession to do what to take possession not vote to take possession why are we voting and they didn't vote <laughs> why are we voting they didn't vote for it they came and took possession of your foreparents land great of the territories of the new world and to subjugate exploit and when necessary to fight the native inhabitants wait a minute hold on Hold on. The requirement is we are coming to take possession of your land. If you resist, we're going to kill you. We're going to subjugate means put you in slavery. Bring it out. Here's, what, here's what many of us don't realize. When you think of slavery, you all like you think of so-called blacks, right? Let's be honest. We think of blacks. No, 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 no. You think that too, right? 
Slavery began with Native Americans. Yep. Bring it out. Did you know that? You didn't know that. Why? They don't teach that history to us. Because it would start to line up and make sense that we are the exact same people. Yes, that's right. right. They, they, they forced our slavery in the 1600s into everybody's mind. They ingrained it. But what about the slavery of the 14 and 1500s to the natives in the same country? Bring it out. Bring it out. What happened to that? Nobody seems to know that history. Guess what? The history's right here. The history's right there in the Bible. That's what happened to your forefathers. Bring it out. Right. The conquistadors who are Caucasian Spaniards or Europeans came and conquered your forefathers who came over here in the 7th century due to um, under Salomonessa, B.C., under Salomonessa the king came to this side of the world to keep God's laws. Bring it out. Bring it out. The conquistadors came here and slaughtered them. We were keeping God's laws in the interiors of Africa. Guess what? They came put us into captivity, slaughtered us, and brought us in the same land. Right, That's why yeah. Jeremiah 50 said we'll be um, oppressed, together. oppressed together. We're oppressed in the same lands. Everywhere you see so-called Hispanics, you see blacks right around the corner. Bring it out. Right. Every neighborhood. We live in the same neighborhoods. We're right. oppressed together. Right. We're the same people. Don't let complexion steer your mind. Right. Right. You understand that? Read. Read that requimento. Read some more. The requimento. Spanish for requirement as in demand was read to the Native Americans to inform them of Spain's rights to conquest. The Spaniards thus considered those who resisted as defying God's plan and so used Catholic theology to justify their conquest. So they use Catholic because most so-called Mexicans are Catholics. How did you become Catholics? It says the conquistadors did it when they conquered you and put you in slavery. Bring it out. Bring it out. That's on Google right now. I have the book where that document is, is really in. So this, the same things that we've went through, your four parents went through first. Y'all understand that? Give me, uh, give me limitations five. Bring it out. Hey, where does oh, it say yes. that, um... Represent brother. Where does it say that? Where are you going? Oh, right here. Wait, so they, they couldn't understand. They couldn't, yeah, they couldn't understand. Lamentations chapter 5, verse 1. Remember, O oh Lord, what is come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Here's what we don't realize. The conquistadors were strange to this part of the land. Right. Because your foreparents were dwelling, they had cities, the Incas, the Mayans, they had many royal cities. You know that history, right? I'm talking about metropolises. Right. Where they, let me tell you how genius your foreparents were, our foreparents. You see these streets we have here, cars going up and down? Do you know that started with the Incas and the Mayans? Yep. They made waterways with canoes going different opposite directions. So the streets came from the way the Incas and the Mayans made their, they dug out waterways like streets and they would go up and down the streets in their canoes. Where did, where did the white man get that from? He got that from our foreparents. That's, that's because we are the genius engineers in the earth. Just like in slavery, they stole all our genius ideas and claim it to be their own. That's why they named the streets after the tribe who yeah, tried to right. attribute it to it. You're right, you're right. Great. Especially down in Florida. Yes, it's everywhere. Go ahead. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Right. Our houses to aliens. Wait, who's the real illegal aliens? Our houses to aliens. God called the conquistadors the real illegal aliens. That's what God says. God says they're the aliens because this land was given to your foreparents as an inheritance. They were supposed to dwell here keeping God's commandments. Then some illegal aliens showed up and took it all from you. Huh. But do y'all remember why we're going through this? What do we do? Inherit the, the, the land of milk and honey. I hear you, brother. Brother, what you said? What, 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 what are we not doing? What are we not doing? What are we not doing as a people? Why are we on the bottom? Why are we going through what we're going through? First of all, we ain't got no unity. Okay, we ain't got no unity. What did we read? What are we not keeping? 
the internal law, the natural law of God, natural God's intelligence. That's right. That's so natural. Your parents, the reason the conquistadors came is because they weren't keeping God's commandments. Right. Why did the Europeans come against us? Because we weren't keeping God's commandments. Right. Always remember that. Why are we suffering the way we're suffering? Because we're not keeping God's commandments. Right. right. And we're going to go over some commandments with y'all today. Great. Lamentations chapter 5, verse 2. Our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. We are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are as widows. We have drunken our water for money. This is funny because natives dwelt in these lands, right? All throughout Florida, Seminole Indians, dwelt in all these lands, all the way down into Mexico, right? Because actually Mexico spread all the way to Texas, was all of California, all the way up to Oklahoma. That was originally Mexico. Every time they conquered native tribes, they pushed them further and further away to create the United States of America. Do y'all realize that? So in doing that, it says, we have drunken what? We have drunken our water for money. Doesn't water fall free from the sky? You can catch it in a bale and drink it, right? But now you have to pay for water. Where are we reading this from? From the Bible. That was the inheritance given to you. The water free from the sky, the, everything of the land belongs to your foreparents. But now, you have to pay them for it. But it doesn't stop there with the water. Keep reading. Our wood is so... Whose wood? Our wood. Your wood. So every tree that you would see belonged to your parents, to your foreparents. Is everything from the eye that I can see belongs to your foreparents. Israel. Right? Which yes, which are you the children of Israel, Israel. Right? Our wood is sold unto us. Our necks are under persecution. So it says your wood is sold, so the trees that you will be able to chop down, make your houses, your habitations, things of that nature. Guess what? Now you have to buy the wood from the illegal aliens. That's crazy. Now you see the things that we call teepees that our native brothers and sisters had, teepees? Those are actually called tabernacles according to God. Well, natives were keeping the Feast of Tabernacles. Listen, another example. You notice on native clothing, there's always these fringes, these tassels. Did you notice one of God's laws? The children of Israel are supposed to wear fringes on their garments. Did y'all realize that? So these things that you see right here, those are the same exact things that Native Americans have on their clothing. This is how we know they're the children of Israel. These are our people. We are the same exact people. We're reading the curses. We have to buy our water now. We got to buy the wood now. We got to buy all our natural resources that were given to you. Why? Because illegal aliens came and took it. Right. The people who God did not give an inheritance to, who did not choose, they came and took it from us. Right. Why? What are we not doing? Oh, God. Thank you. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.